You're a tech enthusiast, so tell me, who do you think is doing the better out of AMD, Intel and Nvidia? You know full well that Intel's got 10 nanometer problems. You know that you can't really buy a decent desktop processor from Intel at the moment unless it uses a colossal amount of power and is restricted to eight cores unless you go back a gen to 10 cores. This is terrible. On the other hand, laptops are filled with Intel processors. You know that as well. Intel doesn't have gaming graphics at the moment. You know that too. Intel, they're a huge company, but they've got problems. AMD, they've got processors and they've got gaming graphics. Their laptops at the moment are good. Epic in the data center is going great guns. AMD, they're going places. Nvidia, eh, they do graphics. And you know what? They can't even supply those graphics. You want to buy a 3080 or a 3090? Good luck with that. You can have all the cash in the world and you need all the cash in the world. You still can't buy the blessed thing. Nvidia though, look at their stock market position compared to both Intel and AMD. Nvidia is huge. And Nvidia is also a confusing company and an annoying company. They drove Jim from Adore TV out of tech videos. The 3080 was a flagship all the while comparing it to the mid-range of previous generations. You chose to believe all of that over me. Some of you who have been watching me for four years accusing me of misleading you deliberately when I was one of the very few trying to open your damned eyes and minds to the truth. And that is why I cannot do this any longer. That's how annoying NVIDIA can be because they have this colossal mindshare among consumers. And the fact is, my recent graphics card acquisitions for my own personal PC, I bought GTX 980, I bought 1080, I bought 2080, and I bought that 3080. And when we moved to the next gen, that 3080 data was going inside my own personal PC. But from another perspective, Nvidia's past is littered with failures. Mind you, the same is true of AMD and Intel. Uh, if you look at Apple products, for example, there's not a scrap of NVIDIA since the Intel Core 2 Duo days when NVIDIA chipsets had uh, graphics built into the chipset and they had the famous bump gate thing where the chipsets essentially peeled away from the motherboards inside the laptops. And Apple and NVIDIA had a big falling out and NVIDIA has nothing inside any Apple products whatsoever. Similar thing with mobile. Uh, if you think about it, NVIDIA has claimed design win after design win for Tegra, and yet how many tablets have you seen powered by NVIDIA apart from their own Shield products? For that matter, how many Intel powered phones have you seen? And the answer in both cases, I suspect, is a resounding zero. AMD is not even in that market as far as I'm aware. So in a sense, all three companies are equally failures. And then we have acquisitions. So AMD is buying Xilinx, which from the point of view of PC gamers is a curious old thing. Intel's just bought a long list of companies, including in the self-driving car market. And Nvidia bought Mellanox for $7 billion. That was only April of last year, just as the uh, pandemic was setting in. Why on earth would anybody buy a networking company for serious money? I mean, as a percentage of NVIDIA's value, it's, it's a drop in the ocean. But Mellanox, a company none of us knew anything about, networking, fast networking. How dull, how dreary. Proof that NVIDIA has lost their minds. Going to say it here and now, if you want to bet against Jensen, more fool you. If they've done it, they've done it for some reason. So Mellanox, we'll put a pin in that one. And then September 2020, Nvidia announced they wanted to buy ARM for 40 billion US dollars. Now ARM is currently owned by the Japanese SoftBank. It was a British company based in Cambridge. As we know, ARM does not manufacture chips. It makes designs for processors and any number of companies, your Qualcomm's, Huawei's, uh, Apple, of course, base designs on ARM's designs. So NVIDIA wanting to buy ARM, that's caused a stir. And right now our government is currently fighting. I'm not sure what they're fighting to do actually, but they're looking at the situation anyway. Uh, they don't seem entirely warm about the idea, but it seems that NVIDIA buying ARM is a problem um, strategically, whereas the Japanese buying ARM seemingly is absolutely fine. I don't actually understand that position one little bit. If we wanted to reserve ARM as a British uh, tech giant, I could understand that. After all, the French did it with Danone. If yogurt can be strategic, I think ARM is strategic. Anywho, Nvidia, they want to buy ARM and they have bought Mellanox. 
what the heck is NVIDIA up to? And then we had their recent GTC announcement, which was a YouTube thing, lasted 90 minutes. Here's how these things have been going in the past couple of years when it comes to keynotes and uh, video blasts from companies. Generally, they take 30 or 40 minutes of stuff and they stretch it way beyond breaking point. Jensen didn't. He started at a run and he kept up that run for an hour and a half. It was an absolute delight watching the man in action. And the stuff NVIDIA's announced, oh boy. What we did not get were any new graphics cards or graphics cards of interest to gamers. And that's fine by me. I don't want new graphics cards from NVIDIA. What I want is for them to supply the existing range of graphics cards, ideally at sensible prices. I don't have any hope of that, but the idea that NVIDIA has not just announced a swathe of new graphics cards, fine by me. Instead, NVIDIA was talking about AI, 5G, the Omniverse and Hyperion 8. The idea of the Omniverse digital twins, we've heard for many years, the likes of Rolls-Royce Aero will have a digital twin of each of the engines that's in service on an aircraft somewhere. There'll be a digital twin running uh, essentially a simulation. So they can keep track of miles, temperatures, oil pressures, wear and so on and so forth. And then they can sell the engine uh, as a service. So they, they charge by the thousand kilometers rather than by the engine. NVIDIA is doing all manner of deep learning and machine learning. It's flowing through their GPUs. What can we do with this data? We'll build the blooming universe. That's what they're doing. And they're calling it the Omniverse. One of the partners in this video was BMW. Uh, but the point is that NVIDIA is showing that they can model entire plants. You can run a simulation of your new production line on GPU before you uh, actually put it into action. Furthermore, NVIDIA says they are a computing platform. If you have only a GeForce graphics card, every student can now have a supercomputer or have access to a supercomputer somewhere across the internets in the cloud. And as we know, the cloud is just another way of saying someone else's computer. In this case, NVIDIA's computer. Of course, at the moment, the vast majority of NVIDIA's compute is on systems running on Intel or possibly AMD. What NVIDIA wants is for that to be NVIDIA on NVIDIA, which is where ARM comes into the equation. Today, we're announcing our first data center CPU, Project Grace. Named after Grace Hopper, a computer scientist and US Navy Rear Admiral, who in the 50s pioneered computer programming, Grace is ARM-based and purpose-built for accelerated computing applications of large amounts of data such as AI. We'll have GPUs, CPUs, and also DPUs, data processing units. Bluefield is designed to offload a major part of network functions, including all the processing that goes with them. The numbers that NVIDIA is talking about are absolutely monumental. Now, admittedly, they're marking their own homework here. But judging by the state of NVIDIA's claims, these chips are orders of magnitude beyond where we're currently at. The amusingly named Superpod has been updated with Bluefield 2 and can include, if you go to the absolute extremes, an A100 with 80 gigabytes of memory. Superpod starts at a mere 7 million US dollars. If you go for a full fat system, up to 60 million US dollars. Also of interest, we have NVIDIA's DGX Station 320G, which can transfer, they tell us, eight terabytes of data in a second. And it consumes just 1500 watts, which is the maximum safe limit for a uh, mains power socket in North America. So you can plug one of these things in if you want to your domestic power. Thing is, 1500 watts sounds hefty for a PC. This is clearly a different league of computing, but compared to some of the more specialist systems which run on many kilowatts, that actually, one and a half kilowatts, is not much. You can get a feel for NVIDIA's ambition here if you look at games consoles. So clearly both the Xbox and PlayStation run on AMD APUs, but as soon as you get away from the hardware inside the box and you're into the services, the software that the consoles run on, and then the services behind that connect gamers together and that sell you games, Take a look at Microsoft. Obviously the Xbox software is their own, as is the service, as is the Azure cloud. In NVIDIA's case, they seem to want to sell you the hardware that you're using, whether it's a laptop or a PC or whatever, 
uh, and in particular the graphics. And then as you move away, the cloud services and everything running at those data centers potentially could also be NVIDIA. These Superpods and DJX stations, well, those will clearly be at the edge, i.e. at your factory or your research center or your lab. NVIDIA wants to sell you those as well or lease them or whatever. So they seem to have an attitude which is we can compete everywhere. The scale of Nvidia's ambition is breathtaking, there's no denying that. I was actually heartened to see that when Jensen was showing some of the translation services and such like, was mildly amusing to see that Jensen clearly has a sense of humour because I'm assuming that every single word that went in this presentation had been okayed by him. It's crystal clear Nvidia is his company and he is Nvidia. Beyond that, the scale of Nvidia's ambition is just monumental. And I really don't think we'll be wise to bet against them. So let's see what they achieve in 2022, 2023 and 2024. But right now, NVIDIA is on a roll and they ain't slowing down anytime soon.